2003 through 2007 Honda Accord with the 2.4 liter engine. We're going to be replacing the clutch, rear main seal, and everything related to the clutch. Now the factory way to do this is to drop the subframe out, but we're going to do this without removing the subframe and I'm going to show you everything you need to know so you can get this out and save yourself a lot of time and money. So stay tuned for that. So in this video, I'm going to be using all Honda factory replacement parts. I will link these all up in the description of the video. We're going to place the, replace the rear main seal, the pilot bushing, throw out bearing, and we're also going to be replacing the pressure plate, the clutch disc, and also we're going to be replacing the flywheel. Now the only thing we're not going to do in this job is we're not going to replace the slave cylinder and master cylinder. The hydraulic side of this clutch was working in perfect condition. I'm also going to be servicing the transmission fluids and all this will be linked up in the description of the video. Okay, I'm going to get started by loosening up the battery cables, positive and negative, taking them both off, taking the battery hold down by removing the two bolts and taking the battery completely out. So when doing this job, I used a lot of cordless tools and I will link these all up in the description of the video also. That way, if you guys are interested in these tools, you can pick those up and to make your life a lot easier, make jobs like these go a lot faster. So I'll link that up in the description for you guys. To get the battery hold down, you need to loosen up the two nuts on it and then pull the J-hooks out from the little holes in the bottom and set that aside. Now you can pull the cables off and now you can fully remove the battery. Now you can remove the plastic tray that the battery was sitting on. It's hooked onto the battery cables, you have to pull that off. Once you get that pulled off, now we're going to take the air box off. There's going to be four fasteners holding it on. We're going to loosen up the clamp here at the throttle body. We're going to pull the vent hose off here or push it off here. And there's going to be one here with the hose clamp. Pull that off. And then we're going to disconnect the uh, mass airflow sensor. And then the wire loom holder is held on right here. I just use a flat braid screwdriver or pry bar and pop it off right here. Now that you got the air cleaner assembly removed, we're going to take the bottom portion of the air box out by removing the 10 millimeter bolts on the corners here. And then once we get that popped out, there's a wire loom is held on at the front of the air box. And I have a tip for getting those off. So what you do is if you use a eight millimeter socket like this one here, and if you press it on the bottom of the tabs here and press up on it, it'll squeeze the tabs and it'll allow you to pop it off the air box. So what you do is get that eight millimeter right under, under the tabs here, push up, and, it'll, and it what, what this doing is just squeezing the tabs on the left and right side here and it allows you to pop it right off. It makes it really easy to do. Now we're going to remove the two bolts here on the slave cylinder and unbolt the uh, slave cylinder. Once we get those two bolts removed, we're going to follow the hydraulic line towards the back of the transmission here and there's going to be a one 10 millimeter bolt here holding it on here. To give you a good reference of where the slave cylinder is, it's just underneath the throttle body here. And I'm getting to that with a 12 millimeter socket, a long extension. I'm using my impact tool here to remove these two fasteners. So once you get the two bolts removed from the slave cylinder, you're just going to pull it kind of forward and off the little the fork on the, uh, on the clutch here, the clutch fork. So you're going to pull it off like this and lift it up. Now you're going to pop it out of the little plastic bracket right here by the motor mount or the transmission mount. And you're going to fall it back and disconnect the rear uh, bolt. And then once you got this all disconnected here, you're just going to push it off to the side onto the fender and out of your way. Now with the hydraulics out of the way, we're going to disconnect the shift linkage here by removing the cotter pins. And we're going to pull these two cotter pins out here and here. I recommend you throw these away and not reuse these cotter pins. And then once you get the cotter pins uh, pulled off, underneath the uh, cotter pin is going to be a washer. So you're going to pull the washer off and there's going to be like a little nylon washer underneath that. You need to keep track of that. So once you get the cotter pins and washers removed, you can go ahead and pull the linkage off the shafts. Now that you've got that unhooked, we're going to take the three 10 millimeter bolts holding the shift uh, linkage onto the top of the transmission here. So go ahead and remove these off. And once you get them unbolted, then you're going to lift the, uh, the linkage up and you can tuck it off towards the rear of the uh, firewall and out of your way. So directly below the battery tray is the speed sensor. We need to unplug that by squeezing the tabs and pulling it off. Then we're going to follow the wire loom and you can either unplug them with the plastic connectors or do what I recommend is take the, uh, the 10 millimeter bolts holding the uh, wire looms down, unbolt those. And then there's also going to be a 12 millimeter here. We're going to unbolt this 12 millimeter um, bolt here and then we're going to follow the wire loom back further towards the back of the transmission. And there'll be a, a third, uh, bracket holding the wire loom down. So once you get these all unbolted, what we're going to do is we're just going to lift the wiring harness up and kind of push it out of our way for now. 
There will also be another electrical connector right here on the top of the uh, transmission that you want to unplug and tuck off to the side. Now at the very top of the transmission where it mounts to the bell housing is uh, two 17 millimeter bolts. We're going to remove those. You can see them just behind the shifter and I got to those using an impact tool with an extension and a 17 millimeter socket and made quick work of removing these two uh, 17 millimeter bolts. So now that you got those removed, we need to work on getting the starter unbolted and the starter is underneath the intake. So we need to pull the intake back and get to the starter bolts. We're going to start by removing the top cover here by removing the two 10 millimeter acorn nuts and setting the cover aside. So now you're going to need a 12 millimeter socket and we're going to remove the, the five fasteners holding the plenum on. So they're going to start on the left here and just work your way. So two of them are going to be nuts and three of them will be bolts. So you're going to remove the five fasteners here. Now we're going to loosen up the lower support bracket. So if you look right under the throttle body, there's a black bracket here. You're going to follow it down and we're going to take that bolt out at the very bottom. Now we're ready to pull the manifold back and off. And when I do this, I try to leave everything connected. So I try to leave as much of it as I possibly can. So I'll give it a pull, pull back and just kind of uh, see what's in the way or what needs to be pulled back. So I'm able to pull it off, but to get a little bit more access, I uh, unplugged a few of the fuel injectors and a few of the uh, wire loom holders and uh, popped off a couple of hoses here. And that gave me a little bit more room to pull it back towards the radiator and get a little bit more access so I can get in here and get to the starter bolts. We're not gonna unplug the electrical connectors or remove the electrical connectors, just remove the bolts for the starter. So now as you can see with the intake pulled back pretty far, we have pretty good access to get in here and get the starter unbolted. So like I said, we're gonna leave the electrical connectors connected. We're not gonna unbolt that. We're just gonna remove the 14 millimeter bolt there. And then underneath here, a little harder to see, but right down here is a 17 millimeter bolt we're gonna to get to. And we're gonna take those two bolts out and then we're just gonna slide the starter back about a quarter inch. To get to the top 14 millimeter bolt, I just used a wobbly socket and a long extension and uh, I was able to get in there and crack it free. And once you crack it free, you can just spin that bolt out by hand. You wanna be careful of the knock sensor. If you feel like it's in the way, you can unplug it or even unbolt it to get it out of your way. Uh, just be careful not to damage it. So after that, we're gonna do the same thing to get to the uh, lower bolt, but the only difference is we're using a uh, 17 millimeter socket. So we're gonna crack that free. And once we get that crack free, we can go ahead and pull the bolt out. And then you should be able to slide the starter back about a quarter inch or so, and that's all we need to do. So now we're gonna unbolt the top transmission mount. You don't have to worry about the transition falling below because there's additional two mounts below it holding it on and also side mounts. So you're gonna remove the two bolts on the transmission portion of the mount here. And then we're gonna move, remove a third bolt here on the uh, frame of uh, the unibody here, pull this off, and then the uh, motor mount bracket will come off. And you also want to inspect this mount here to make sure that the uh, bushing is and everything are in good shape. Now would be a good time to replace it if it needs to be replaced. Now we're going to go in the very back here and remove one bolt on the mount here. It's a 17 millimeter. You can see it back there. And to do that, I just used a um, 17 millimeter socket and a flex head ratchet. Go ahead and crack that bolt free and remove it. Now we need to get the vehicle up in the air. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands to get the front of the vehicle up as high as you can. Then we're going to remove both front wheels. Once you got both front wheels removed, we're going to remove the axle nuts next and you're going to need a 36 millimeter socket. So we're going to take both left and right side axle nuts off. Now you're going to want to use a little bit of penetrating oil and spray it on the axle shaft here. We're going to try to get this to push inwards. A lot of times they're uh, free and they'll push in like this with no problem. But every now and then you'll come across one that's stuck and you don't want to hit it with a hammer. So there's a special tool that's made by OTC. It bolts up to the hub here. And as you turn the center nut here, it pushes the axle shaft in and frees it from the hub here. I'll link this up in the description of the video also. Now we're going to remove the cotter pin from the ball joint and we're going to unbolt it and also unbolt the wishbone here and we're going to do that for both left and right side. So take the cotter pins out, we're not going to reuse those and throw those away. Once you got the ball joints unbolted, I like to screw the nuts back on just a little bit and then I strike the side of the uh, control arm here with a hammer and that pops the ball joint free from the, uh, the lower control arm. Then you can go ahead and take off the, uh, the finish taking off the nut and then you can lift straight up like this and pull the uh, ball joint out of there. 
Then you can remove the bolt going through the wishbone here, and we're going to do that on both on the left and right side. Now that I got it all unbolted, I pulled it apart, and what I did was I used a tie strap and tied it off to my hoist here to get the suspension and uh, brakes and stuff out of the way. That way I can get the axles out, because I'm working all by myself. I'm doing this whole job by myself, so we're going to pop the axles out. But before we remove the axles all the way, I'm going to get the uh, transmission fluid draining here by removing the, uh, the, the plug here on the driver's side of the transmission. And we're going to drain out about a quart and a half of oil out of this uh, transmission. That's all it holds. It doesn't hold very much. And it's just a 3 8 uh, ratchet that you need to remove this. So it just has a 3 8 head on here. You slap your ratchet in there, crack it free, and you can go ahead and uh, drain your fluid out of it. While that's draining, I'm going to go over to the passenger side and go ahead and work on getting the axle out. So it has a support bearing in the middle here that we need to remove. So we're going to remove the uh, three 14 millimeter bolts holding it on. And I'm just using a, a cordless ratchet here to do that. So one of the bolts is going to be uh, different. So two bolts will have shoulders on them and one bolt will not have the shoulder on them. So the two bolts on the, on the left will have the shoulders and then the one on the right side, far right towards the passenger side of the vehicle will not have a shoulder on it. So you want to make sure you keep track of that when you go to put it back together. Now that you got the axle shaft unbolted, you can go ahead and push the uh, suspension off to the side. If you're using the tie strap, tie it off to the side. Now you can slide the axle out. So I'm just using both hands and just wiggle it and pull it out. We don't even need to take it all the way out of the car. You just need to uh, push it back and out of your way. Now the axle is out. We can go ahead and put the uh, drain plug back in and tighten it up. It's just like tightening up an oil pan drain plug. Just tighten it up till it's snug. Then we're going to pop the uh, driver's side axle out here. So I'm just using a pry bar and you're going to go up in between the transmission and the axle here and just give it a little pop, a little pry uh, to the left like this and it'll pop the axle out of the, uh, out of the transmission and then you'll be able to pull it out. This side you want to pull completely out of the car. Now that we got both axles uh, popped out, we're going to remove the, um, the bracket that goes around the bell housing here. It goes, so it goes around the bell housing and there's four fasteners we're going to remove. And uh, it bolts up to the engine and, and the transmission. So we're going to remove those four fasteners and take this bracket off. Now if you look at the mount here, it's mounted half on the engine and half onto the transmission. We're going to remove the, the uh, top bolt we already did. We're going to remove the bottom bolt here and that's going to free it from the transmission. We're going to leave these two on the engine side still bolted up. Once you get that bolt removed, it's not going to come all the way out of the car. It's going to make contact here. That's okay. We don't need it all the way out. We just need it unbolted from the transmission there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a transmission jack. If you're doing this at home, you can use a floor jack right underneath the transmission here. And we're going to slightly jack it up about a quarter inch. And that's going to give a little, free a little pressure off the two mounts here at the end of the transmission. We're going to remove these two mounts. So there's uh, four fasteners in total two going vertical like this and then there's going to be two on the bottom over here and there's two over here and then two over here that we're going to remove all four of these fasteners once you get all four of them unbolted you can go ahead and pull these uh, mounts out and now the transmission jack is holding up the uh, transmission also the engine is still fully bolted in so we can go ahead and remove these two uh, engine mounts here or transmission mounts now on the back side of the transmission we're going to remove the two 17 millimeter bolts here when you go to take these out, you want to pay attention to them. So the, uh, the bolts are different lengths. So the top one is a longer one and the bottom one is a shorter bolt. So you want to pay attention to that. And then we're going to go around the, to the opposite side here. And we're going to remove the 17 millimeter bolt coming in from the uh, transmission side right here. So we're going to remove that 17 millimeter bolt. Once we get that 17 millimeter bolt, we should be able to pry the transmission back a little bit like this and pry it off the dowel rods. And now it's sitting on the transmission jack. So what we're going to do is we're going to pry it on both sides and free the transmission from the engine. So now I'm going to lower the transmission jack down just a quarter inch or so just to give it a little bit more slack in the transmission. And, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this transmission and push it back. And we're going to pull it back into these. Uh, we're going to come around here. I'll show you. So once you get it unbolted off and sitting on the transit jack, we're going to pull it back into this cavity here on top of the uh, control arm and laying on top of the, of the frame. And we're not going to unbolt that frame. So we're just going to pull it back as far as we possibly can. And then you'll have a pretty large gap in your enough room to get in here and remove everything we need to remove without dropping that subframe. So this is where it's going to save you a ton of money and time. To make sure the transmission stays in place, I used a tie strap and wrapped it around the transmission and wrapped it around the frame here. And uh, I have it pulled back as far as I can and now the tie strap's holding it secure. So, 
So now we're able to remove the pressure plate and flywheel. We're going to remove the six fasteners holding the uh, pressure plate on. And what we're also going to do is put a crank, uh, a 19 millimeter ratchet and socket on here. And that will allow us to crank the engine around so we can rotate the engine to get to all the fasteners. The bolts holding the pressure plate on are 10 millimeter, but they're 12 point. So you're going to need a 12 point socket to remove these. And I'm using the ratchet over here to hold the engine still while I crack these free. And then once I crack them free, then I use my ratchet here to uh, spin the bolt out. Once I get one bolt removed, then I just rotate the engine to the next bolt is uh, right where I want to work out on it at. So just rotate it around and you can take the next bolt out and you keep doing that until all of the fasteners are removed. Then you can use a little pry bar and you want to make sure that you're ready to catch it because it's quite heavy. So the pressure plate and the clutch disc will come down at the same time. You want to be careful not to drop the disc. It can fall on your feet. Now we can unbolt the flywheel. You're going to need a 17 millimeter 12 point socket to remove these uh, fasteners. And I just use a, like I said, a 12 millimeter 12 point socket and I use a, a, a half inch uh, ratchet here these can be a little bit on the tight sides so you can go ahead and uh, crack these free so you can go ahead and loosen up all the fasteners and take them off and i'll show you how i was able to hold the uh, engine from rotating so what you can do to hold the uh, engine from rotating when you're loosening up the flywheel bolts is to use a ratchet like this and let it wedge up against the suspension and that'll hold it still while you're loosening up all the fasteners then once you get all the uh, fasteners loosened, then I, what I did was I switched over to a little ratchet to uh, make it faster to pull them out. So I loosened them up by hand and then switched over to my little uh, cordless ratchet here to remove all the fasteners. Then you can drop the flywheel out just like this. So now that the flywheel's out, we got access to the pilot bearing and also the rear main seal. And if you look here, there's a bunch of the clutch material all built up here. Uh, you don't want to breathe this stuff in, so you want to be careful. You want to clean this off. If you want to, you could spray it with some soap and water, and that'll keep the dust from uh, spreading everywhere and breathing it in. The pilot bushing here can be a little bit of a, a, a chore or pain to get out. It requires a special tool. There's a couple different ones you can use. You can use the slide hammer style or the puller style. I'm using the puller style since it's uh, smaller and I can get in here with it. So the way it works is if you tighten up this center nut, it'll spread the jaws tighter. And then you uh, turn the, uh, the large nut here and that'll pull the, uh, the bushing out of the, uh, of the crankshaft. So one of the tips I like to give everybody when they're working on this type of stuff is to spray it down with uh, some soap and water and this will keep all that clutch dust from getting airborne and breathing that stuff in. So that'll help you out there. So once you get the pilot bushing to come out, it's going to look like this. To get the rear main seal out, I'm going to use my seal puller slash installer here. And this is a, a pretty handy little tool. I'll link this up in the description also. So you grab these, these uh, forks here and they, you stab them into the seal by pressing them into the seal. And as you press them into the seal, you rotate them and it hooks inside there. Now you can put the arms into the puller here. So they just hook onto the uh, slots on the puller. And then once you got them hooked on there, you just tighten the center nut here and that'll pull the seal out of the, uh, the end of the engine block here. Now I used a screwdriver and a rag to clean out the inside of the groove here and make sure that the oil is free. Prep the seal, I put a little bit of silicone based grease on the inside lip of the uh, seal here and this will help when the uh, crank rotates around it doesn't grip the inside of the seal and tear it so it prevents it from tearing it. So then I just started the seal in the end of the crankshaft by hand and then uh, what I did was I took a little soft mallet and I tapped the, um, the seal in place. So I used my soft mallet and just lightly tapped around in a circle and pushing with my fingers to get it to uh, fully seat. To put the pilot bushing in, I just lined it up, make sure it's flush, and I lightly tapped it in with my hammer. And I uh, uh, tapped it in until it was flush. And now we need to drive it in just a little bit more, about a quarter inch more. And the way I did that was I took a a small socket that fit perfectly inside the uh, of the bushing here, which happened to be a 13 millimeter socket. So I slid it in there. And now what I'm gonna do is take the old pilot bushing that we took off with the puller, and I'm gonna use it to drive the, uh, the uh, 
new one in further and then the socket kind of holds it all into place it keeps it uh, in, in in line and i just lightly tap it in a few more taps and that'll drive the new bushing in a little bit further right where we need it to be and then we can just pull out the socket now it's countersunk in there perfectly so when you get your rear main seal and your pilot bushing installed it's going to look like this to remove the old pilot bearing, I just pulled straight out and it came right off. Now we're going to get the uh, fork off and then we're going to get this all transferred out. So on the back of the fork, there's a couple little springs that you're going to spread and that'll allow you to pull it off. So this is what the spring looks like. So we're going to reinstall the clip here and we're going to lubricate the ball socket here with some high temp grease right here. We'll put a little bit of grease on there and get this all cleaned up. And then, so we're going to install the clip. It just slips inside there and I apologize for getting it off camera i thought it was on camera right here but uh, what i'm doing is reinstalling the clip into the uh, the fork here and once i get the uh, clip installed then i'll 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 put it back onto the uh, transmission and put the uh, the pilot bearing on i'll slip it on like this so now we're ready to slip the fork through the bushing here so you'll slide it through the bushing and then you'll slide the pilot bearing over the shaft here and then you'll push it down and then the pivot ball right there you just press on it and the spring clip will spread open and catch it on there now the uh the the fork and pilot bearing are installed and notice i did not put any grease or anything on it it did not come with anything from the factory so i left it dry so now we need to prep the flywheel we need to make sure we get it really clean uh, when they manufactured these and, and put them on the shelves they put an oil on there to prevent them from rusting on the shelf we need to get that oil cleaned off and if you're putting a brand new one on from another manufacturer, then you also want to check for the studs that are on the uh, flywheel. If they are not there, you want to transfer them over from your old one. Now we're going to prep the bolts. So the bolts need to be nice and dry, and you want to put a nice little coat of uh, red thread locker on the uh, bolts to prevent these from vibrating loose and coming back off. Now we're going to bolt the flywheel back up to the crank. So you put it back into position. Um, there's no special way where this particular one goes on. You just line it up with the bolt holes, start the, uh, the bolts all by hand. And uh, on some vehicles, it, it matters exactly where it goes, but the bolt pattern is like kind of offset, so you'll, you, you, it will only line up one way. But this particular one, you can line it up any way. It doesn't matter as long as the bolt holes line up. So go ahead and start the bolts all by hand. Now that I got all the bolts started by hand, I use my little ratchet to run the bolts in. I'm doing this also in a crisscross pattern, kind of like you would do when you're doing a, a wheel, when you're tightening the wheel up, so like in star pattern. So I'm just running them until they're snug. We're gonna torque them down by hand once they're all in there snug. You wanna make sure that nothing cocks when you do this, with, uh, so everything is nice and flush. So now in a crisscross pattern, like a star pattern, we're gonna torque all the uh, fasteners down to 76 six foot-pounds. So uh, a good idea is if you want to, after you torque one, you can mark it with a, a paint marker or something like that. I'll let you know. But I just torqued one down and then went to the next one. And I did all these in a star pattern, crisscrossing back and forth. That makes sure it, it torques down nice and even and it doesn't want to cock it off to the side. That'll cause a vibration. So you want to make sure it's all torqued down nice and even. And I'm also using the the crank bolt is uh, with the breaker bar in the front is wedged in the suspension holding the engine from rotating. Now we want to make sure the pressure plate is clean so you want to clean that surface off and nice and dry. Now when you go to install the clutch disc if you notice that the springs are a little higher on one side than the other so the higher side goes in towards the, uh, the pressure plate so when you go to put this on you're going to need an alignment tool and it's going to go on with the springs in towards the pressure plate so you put it on the uh, on the flywheel like this, put your alignment tool in, and that'll hold it in place. And as you can see, the springs are pointing outwards now. Now we're going to put a little bit of red thread locker on the bolts that go into the pressure plate. Now we're going to take the pressure plate and line it up with the uh, studs on the flywheel. And I had to pull the uh, alignment pin off and slide it on and then slide the alignment pin back through the center of the clutch here, or the pressure plate here, and line it up with the dowel. Now that I got it lined up, holding the center then i rotated the uh, pressure plate until it lined up with the dowels and then i pressed it on and once i got it pressed on you'll see it it'll drop in and seat now i'm going to start all six of the fasteners by hand so i will all make sure that all of them are secured in by hand so the whole time you're starting these bolts you have to keep light pressure inwards towards the the, the flex plate and the 
flywheel and the clutch plate to hold everything aligned up and centered. So once you got all six of the bolts started, then what I did was I took a little ratchet or a cordless ratchet here and I run the fasteners in about halfway. So uh, you'll you'll feel them um, start making contact or you'll feel the you'll feel the pressure starting to build on the on the pressure plate. So you'll don't want them to you don't want to just run one bolt in all the way until it's snug. It'll cock the thing it'll cock it off to the side. So you want to draw it in evenly a couple threads here and then move over and draw it in a couple threads and then move over to the next spot and just, and work your way around in a star pattern. Uh, draw in the clutch and the pressure plate in evenly onto the flywheel. Once you got them all run in until it's snug. Then you can switch over to a torque wrench and you can torque all of the fasteners down to 19 foot pounds and you're going to do this in a star pattern so you're just going to start at one end crisscross back and forth until they're all torqued down to 19 foot pounds. Okay now we're ready to stab the transmission back in so we're going to take the straps off and we're going to make sure that none of the wires up above or anything has fallen down in the area so we don't pinch anything between the, the, the transmission and engine. Now we're just going to wiggle the, uh, the transmission into place. I'm using the transmission jack to help guide the height of the transmission and uh, and then I'm manually lining up and looking for the shaft to go through the center of the uh, pressure plate. So you want to make sure that the uh, the shaft goes through the center. You want to kind of keep it lined up with, as far as your height goes. You don't want it cocked and you just kind of just uh, wiggle it and uh, use, usually they'll, they'll slip right onto the spline pretty easily. If it, also, you can rotate the crank pulleys slightly back and forth to help line everything up. So you're going to slide it in until it's it flushed up against the block. Then once you got that, you can go ahead and start the bolts. On the back side here, they had the two bolts. The top bolt was the longer bolt. So you want to make sure that you put the longer bolt in first and then, and then the bottom bolt. And then um, I started these by hand. And then you go on the opposite side and you start the uh, the bolt over here. Then you can run them both all in and tighten these up. These bolts are torqued down to 47 foot-pounds. So go ahead and torque those down. Now we're going to start the engine mounts here. So the one that split the engine slash transmission here above the axle shaft, we're going to start that bolt and tighten it up. Then we're going to put the two uh, transmission mounts that went on the rear of the transmission here. Go ahead and start those bolts. Um, and we're going to tighten these all these fasteners up. So if you're having trouble lining up the bolts, you can use the transmission jack to lift up the transmission slightly up or down to help line up the, the bolt holes here. You want to start everything by hand before you uh, tighten anything down. Once you get the bolts coming from the side tightened up, you can tighten up the two bolts on the bottom for each one of the mounts here. And then you can go ahead and remove the transmission jack. Now we can go ahead and bolt up the bell housing bracket. Go ahead and start all four fasteners and tighten those down. Now we can take the passenger side axle, go ahead and stab it back into the transmission and start the three bolts holding the mount on. Uh, when you're doing this, you want to make sure you support it with both hands so you don't want to nick the seal. You want to go straight in with it. You may also have to manipulate the suspension to help get it. And also the, um, the, the bracket here will want to flip upside down and stuff. So you want to make sure that you uh, have it in the right position when you stab it into the transmission. So you'll slide it in until it fully seats, and then once it's fully seated, then you should be able to line up the uh, the three bolts for the mounts. So the three bolts are different. The two with the shoulders went on the left side, and then the one without the shoulder went on the far right here. I recommend starting these bolts by hand, and then once you got them all started, then you can tighten them all down. Now you can reinstall the driver's side axle. I have the wishbone pushed over to the side. That way I can uh, swing the axle up through it like this. And then we can get a straight on shot with the, uh, with the axle shaft. So I lined it up with the transmission of a straight on shot. And basically I just pushed it in by hand, no hammers or anything, just shoved it in and it fully seated. Once it's fully seated, then we can take the wishbone here, put it back into position, start the bolt here and slide it through. I actually found it a little easier to stab the axle through the hub here. And then once it got the axle stabbed through, lift it up and then put the ball joint into the lower control arm. And then once you got the ball joint stabbed through, then it was easier to uh, slide the wishbone bolt through the control arm. So it was easier to, to, uh, to push it in, into the position. And then uh, once you got it pushed into position, you can uh, pull down on the control arm to get the bolt to line up and then you can put it through. So I got the axle stabbed through with the axle nut started, the ball joint stabbed with the ball joint uh, bolt started. Then I slid the bolt through 
the wishbone and once I got that slid through then I went ahead and started the bolt. We're going to do the same process over on the passenger side and then after that we're going to torque everything down. So the bolt going through the wishbone was torqued down to 47 foot pounds and then the ball joint here was torqued down to 72 foot pounds. After that I installed a new cotter pin. If it doesn't quite line up with the holes on the uh, on the castle nut you can rotate it a little tighter to get it to line up. So we're going to do that for both sides. Then we're going to start the axle nuts and run them in until they're snug. We're not going to torque them down just yet. We're going to put the wheel on after that. So at this point you should have both left and right side suspension pretty much bolted up together. Now what I'm going to do is pop the center cap out of the wheels here. And the reason why we're going to do that is we're going to torque the lug nut through the center to that hole. So I put the wheel on, torque it down to 87 foot pounds. Once the wheel was torqued, then I put a socket through the hole of the rim and torqued it down, the axle nut down to 181 foot pounds. So as you can tell, I have the, the wheel touching the ground. I also have my hammer rolled up under, kind of acting like a wheel chalk to prevent the car from rolling. Now we need to smash the axle nut in on this little groove here to prevent it from rotating back off. And you just use a punch to do that. Once you got that done, you can take the center cap and go ahead and push it back onto the, uh, the wheel here. So you're going to do that same process for the driver's side also. So now we're ready to go ahead and put the starter back in. So you go ahead and line it up and push it in until it's fully seated. And then you're going to start the 14 millimeter bolts on top and the uh, 17 millimeter on the bottom. I also recommend starting both of these bolts by hand. And then if you disconnected the uh, knock sensor or took the knock sensor out because you may have, may have been in your way, you can go ahead and put that in also. And we're going to tighten these two bolts up. Now we're ready to put the intake back on or the plenum back on. I'm going to reuse the gasket on and you could reuse them. They're made out of metal. If it's in bad shape, I recommend you replace it. But so go ahead and push the uh, plenum back into position, line it up with the studs on the, uh, on the inner portion of the uh, intake here. And then once it's uh, lined up, then you can go ahead and start the uh, fasteners holding it down. So I started all the bolts by hand, the two nuts and the three uh, bolts on the bottom there. Once that's done, I fall down the to the bracket down here and start at the bracket here. I make sure that everything's still loose and started everything by hand. Once you got this started, then you can go ahead and tighten the bottom bolt bracket down here. You can go ahead and tighten that down. And once that's tightened down, then we'll torque down the uh, upper portion of it. So we're going to start in the middle here and we're going to torque this down to 16 foot pounds and we're going to work in a crisscross pattern just like a star pattern and go out, work back and forth until all of them are torqued down to 16 foot pounds. Now if you unplugged any of the injectors or anything to get more slack in it, go ahead and plug all that back in. I'm, uh, I, uh, I pulled the wire loom off so I'm putting the wire loom holder back down, making sure the injectors are plugged back in and any of the vent hoses that you may have taken off, go ahead and reconnect all that now. So now you want to double check that everything's hooked up right here with it we touched in this area and once that's all secured then we can go ahead and take the top engine cover and put that on. Now it's time to fill the transmission back up with fluid. Right back here on the back is a 17 millimeter nut. We're going to remove this and this is the fill plug. So we're going to fill this up with one and a half quarts. That's all it's uh, recommended when you drain the uh, transmission is one and a half quarts. So go ahead and pour one and a half quarts of the Honda approved transmission fluid into it. Now you can torque the fill plug down to 33 foot pounds. So now we're gonna take the long bolt that went through the engine mount back here or the transmission mount and go ahead and start that in the very back of the transmission back here. Once you got that bolt started, you can go ahead and tighten this down. Uh, I used the flex head ratchet to get this. You're probably not going to be able to get a torque wrench back there, the proper angle to get it in there. So I would just recommend tightening it down. Now you can take the two bolts that are on the top of the bell housing here and start those. The 17 millimeter ones, go ahead and start both of these and run those in until they're snug. Once you have both of them run in until they're snug, then you can switch over to a torque wrench and torque them down to 47 foot pounds. So now we're going to start at the back of the transmission and we're going to resecure the wire loom here with the bracket. So we're going to bolt that up right here. Once that's bolted up, we're going to follow it back and then we're going to bolt the 12 millimeter bolt here that held on the bracket here. And then we'll follow it around underneath the shift linkage is another bracket here with two 10 millimeter bolts. We're going to bolt those all up and then we're going to plug in the, the speed sensor down below the battery tray here. 
Then there'll be one more electrical connector on, connector on the bell housing here. We'll go ahead and plug that one in. Now we're going to take the top mount here and go ahead and position that back into place. Start all the bolts and tighten those all down. And then uh, when you put this bracket in, you want to make sure that the plastic portion is facing upwards like this. So that's where the hydraulic line mounts through. So go ahead and bolt all this up. Once that's all bolted up, now we're going to work on the hydraulic uh, uh, line. So we're going to start back here in the back, mount the 10 millimeter bolt back here and tighten that up. Then we'll take the, uh, the, the slave cylinder here and, and hook it into the fork. And as you hook it into the fork, press the rod into the fork and also back up inside the slave cylinder. So when you do this, we, we didn't open the bleeder system, so we should not have to bleed this afterwards. So we're, I, I lined it up and then pulled it into position. And once it's pulled into position, you can start the two bolts and tighten those down. So as long as the piston didn't pop out of the bore on the slave cylinder, we should not have to bleed this. So now we're going to go over here and get the shift linkage here and pull it back into position. And uh, we're going to start the three bolts on the back of the housing bolt that down. Once those are all bolted down, then we'll start the uh, hook them up to the linkage put the cotter pins back in. So when you put these on, there should be a nylon washer. Put that on first and then the metal washer and then a, a new cotter pin through and just bend them over. Now that the shift linkage is hooked up, you can go ahead and put the lower air box in place and start the two bolts in the corners and then put the wire loom at the end of the uh, air box, reconnect that. Now we can take the plastic tray that went underneath the battery and go ahead and reinstall that and clip the uh, battery cables back into the uh, little uh, clips. Now we can take the top engine cleaner portion of the air cleaner and put it on and start the bolts, plug in the vent lines, plug in the mass air, make sure that these uh, uh, ports here are plugged in and tighten up the clamp around the throttle body. Now you can go ahead and install the battery, battery hold downs and cables and tighten those all up. Now I'm going to suck the fluid out of the reservoir and put fresh uh, hydraulic fluid in it and then top it off. And now after that we're going to just double check the, uh, the clutch pedal and make sure we got a nice firm pedal. So after pumping the pedal, if it's not firm, you can bleed it. There's a bleeder screw on the side of the, uh, the slave cylinder there. You can uh, bleed it just like you would bleed a brake system. You would pump the pedal, open the bleeder screw on the slave cylinder. But my pedal, it feels good. I'm all, my gear uh, selection is really nice and smooth. Everything is feeling really well. So now I'm gonna go for a little test drive, make sure everything's cool. I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.